So if I told you that around 80% of everything that is consumed on the internet is video, it wouldn't be a surprise for you, right? It's quite intuitive, I guess. Everyone's watching YouTube so much, you're here right now. But what if I told you that around 60% of all the video content consumed is without audio, people watching it simply with the sound off? It's quite incredible, isn't it? And that's exactly why this here, the captions and the subtitles are so important to catch the attention of whoever is scrolling through their feed and seeing your video in the middle of so many others. And before it was a pain to do it, but what if I told you that the subtitles for this intro were done in just 30 seconds? Let me show you. E aí, I'm Manny, a Brazilian photographer living in Italy, and in this channel we talk about photo, video, and tech. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a feature that is still in beta as of recording of this video. I don't know when you're going to be watching this, maybe it's going to be released to everyone already, but it's the transcribe function inside Premiere, in which you can grab the audio from any video file you've got, and it's going to send to transcription, and in just some seconds, it's so fast, it sends back the captions, everything transcribed already, and you can generate subtitles for it that are already cut perfectly throughout your video, just like you saw in the intro. And if you're actually making any kind of content for the internet and you want the chances of it being watched to be as high as possible, you really wanna use this kind of feature. This is gonna be like editing and recording the video at the same time because I'm gonna be editing and transcribing the intro sequence that you already saw right now to get the review. So let's go here inside Premiere. I'm gonna start recording here. I already imported my file inside here. I'm just gonna throw it on the timeline just as it came. I didn't even watch it yet and it also has the mistakes that I made. Okay, so you can see that I have a 1 minute 45 video here in which there are some mistakes in the middle, but I'm gonna transcribe it first and you're gonna see that it's actually even easier to cut a video after it has a transcription because you can see how many times you repeated something and just grab the good part out of it. So I've already updated Adobe Premiere Pro to version 15.0 I can check here exactly what's the number of the version. So 15.1.0 build 48. So this is the minimum you've got to have to have this feature enabled. But as I said, as of recording, it's still in beta. So for you to have access, you have to apply on Adobe system and they have to approve it according to your login on your subscription for you to be able to have this feature. And that's why I have it already. So up here, you've got captions. And all you gotta do is come to here and then here on the left, together with the effects panel and everything, there's gonna be this text panel. And the first option is already transcribe sequence. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Clicking here, it opens this box in which you can choose to just transcribe clips type of dialogue. No, that's not our case. Only the audio on track. Then you can choose a mix of all of them or just audio one. As I have only one here, I'm just gonna leave it as it is and you can say which language it was spoken with. And these are the ones that are available right now. I don't know if they're gonna include other ones later on, but right now I'm gonna leave it here with English, of course. In this case, I'm not selecting an in and out point, but you could if you wanted. So I'm just gonna hit transcribe and let's see how long it's gonna take. It's sending right now all the audio from that file up to the cloud. It's uploading to the server, just the audio, of course, you don't need to upload the, the video. That's why it's so fast. So it's saying that it's a minute remaining. I'm just going to speed it up. So let's see when it finishes. All right, so it's over. Let's take a look here. So it already shows me speaker one. So it can even identify how many people, how many different people are, are talking in your video. In my case, there's only speaker one, of course. And it shows you from which minute and second until when you have each one of these phrases here. And this is not the captions, these are not the subtitles yet. It's just a transcription for you to see what was being spoken properly. So let's take a look up here. So the first sentence is, so if I tell you that around 80%, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this was what I first started saying, but you can see that down here, that is more or less the same thing. And this is exactly because I made a mistake or I just decided to restart all over again. And then from here, I can already figure out that I don't need that part. And if I click in any word, it takes me on the timeline over to that specific point also. So that's why if you want to cut something, if you have the transcription, it's so much easier. Usually what I do when I'm cutting without this feature here is that I 
throw the videos on the timeline and then I check. I can see if there's a gap or if I snapped my fingers that I made a mistake and then I have to consider what's after. But with this, I can simply take a quick look, see that I repeated what I was telling before. And usually the last one is the good one, of course. So I can just simply skip directly to this here and I know that everything that is behind, I can simply cut. So I'm just gonna create a cut here and I know that I have to consider what's behind. Now, there's one thing that I noticed, which is if you delete what's behind and you just do like that, it doesn't update the timestamps over here. So actually you begin to get lost from exactly where were you. So it's better to just like grab it, delete it, but leave it in place and then later fix it. Okay, so it looks like until here it was just fine. So I'm just gonna create a cut here. And then right after you can see that it's already selecting here the last sentence. And here it didn't do any mistakes, so I know already that it's good. The video is cut, but we don't have the subtitles yet. Okay, so I eliminated the parts that I didn't need, but I'm not gonna move the ones that I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna create the captions as it is. I'm just gonna choose subtitle, none, and create from sequence transcript, and that's it. Then now you can see that I actually created a track specifically for the subtitle up here above everything else. So now you've got the audio part of your video, you got the video part of your video properly, and the subtitle is not in the same one as video anymore. It has this special line only for it. And you can see that, okay, it created also the subtitles for the parts we don't need, so we're just gonna remove them here. And that's it. We have the subtitles absolutely ready to use. Let's take a look if it worked. And also you can notice that it cuts, let me put the uh, quality a little bit higher here. And you can see also that it cuts in sizes that are perfect for reading. You don't need to even worry about that because it's just fine. And you can also change later if you want the style of the subtitle. So you can see that now actually what was around here on the left, the controls for how it looked, now they've been transported here to the right and you can see the track style, you can create a new style if you want, you can change the font, for example. Uh, let's just choose another one, whatever here, just for you to see. You can change the spacing, if it's gonna be bold, italic, whatever. If you want them to be on the top, on the bottom, you can move it around, you can make it bigger. And you can change some things also that can be useful, like for example, if you prefer to have them on yellow, we, usually we use yellow or white for them. And if you want to have a stroke around it, just to be sure that it's going to be perfectly visible, you can do it also, make it bigger or smaller. Anyway, you can totally adapt the way that you want the subtitles to how you want them to look. And the only thing you have to pay attention is that when you're going to export, you come here to the export settings dialog, you have to be sure to come to captions and burn captions into video. Otherwise, the captions will not appear in the final exported video. It will be just the video itself and the subtitles will not be there. Now, something very, very important. Does it work with vertical videos also? Because probably you were wondering if it's possible to use it for Reels or for TikToks and things like that. And the answer is yes. And let me show you how it looks like. So I'm just gonna duplicate this sequence here. It's gonna be now, I don't know, vertical sequence. And I'm going to right click and come to sequence settings and I'm going to change it here to 1080 to by 1920. Okay, yes, I understand that it's a different format than my original video. And as you can see, the subtitle is already adapted to the video itself. Of course, the, re the framing of the video hasn't been changed that you have, you're going to have to do manually or you can use also that function inside Premiere to reframe automatically, but this is totally another subject. But anyways, the subtitles are there. One thing you're gonna notice, of course, it's that it's really, really small right now. So you can simply drag it here and then choose the size that you want. It's going to be adapted already to the size of the screen, but you're gonna notice that the other ones didn't change. So what you can do is to apply to all of them, you can just come here to track style and you can create a style and just say, for example, vertical format. All right, and then you're gonna see that the other ones now, they are already adapted and they've adopted already the vertical format style. So all of them are gonna look absolutely the same. So your subtitles are absolutely ready.
All right, guys, this was just a quick tip about content creation in general and how to use this feature inside Premiere. If you don't have it yet, try to update your software and see if it already appears, the caption tab over there for you. Otherwise, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for you to request Adobe if you can use it already and also be a beta tester of this function if it's not yet available to everyone. Thanks so much for watching. If you don't follow me on Instagram and you didn't subscribe here yet, what are you doing, man? Just do it right now. Go ring that bell. Follow me on Instagram also, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.